Hey everyone, this is Daniel, and in today's video, I'm going to talk about how to find your Dataverse table for Power BI, specifically how to find the Microsoft Teams data table for your Power BI report. But before I jump in, first, here's my intro video. Okay, well, thanks to Dataverse and specifically Microsoft Teams Dataverse, I can do everything inside Teams now. I don't even have to go log into my Power Apps or my Power Automate. This entire demo, I'm actually going to show it right over here. So while you're in, I'm going to, I'm going to show you that here's my Power Apps, and I call it as Power Apps because over here I can go see the studio and everything. When I click on Build, I already see the two environments, but I've already got some Dataverse st steps over there, right? In this one, I'm going to stick to my Power Apps Champions team. And what I'll do is I'll go and see all the stuff over here right now. I really don't have anything new. What I'll, what I'll do is as a quick, as a good demo, I'll even go ahead and create a table. So in the table, I'm going to go ahead and call this one as live demo. So I can do it as live demo and I'll name the first one as, I'll leave it as name. Go ahead and creates that. You'll see that my entities, or my table is already created over here in my live demo. It's gonna take me a while to get used to the new name. Okay, and then I'll go ahead and add department. Leave that as text. Go ahead another column and I'll call that as type. Basically, I'm just creating at least a good amount of a table with some demo to make this a you know a good demo. So I've gone ahead and created that. And now when I come out of it, in fact I can go to the tables, there it is. I see the live demo. When I click the live demo, if I click on edit data it shows all my information over here. Now granted, I could go ahead and copy some stuff in or I can just type in Daniel Christian, Department, Innovation, FTE for full-time employee. I could do that, but here's something else I'm gonna show you. What I'll do is in my, I have an Excel spreadsheet over here. I'm gonna go ahead and highlight this whole thing. And I'm gonna do a Control C for copy. I'm gonna come back over here. I'm gonna try something. Let's see if that works. Oh, did not. Let me just do it, because you gotta do it the exact specific way. So I tabbed out and I hit, I'm gonna come back over here and just click on it. I haven't clicked inside because you don't see the cursor blinking. And I'm gonna do a control V and you see all of them showed up over there. At least a good amount of them showed up over there. But that's a fast way to go ahead and get some data in, all right? I'm gonna go ahead and click on, say close. So at least I have some amount of holistic data over here. Um, so we're done with the, building the entity, all right? I've got, or I'm done building the table and I've got some data over here. Now what I want to do is I want to build a report on top of this. Now, a couple of things we need. When we go to the Power BI site over there, I'm going to have to start building, uh, make a connection to that data source over there. And what are my options to build the connection? Because if I'm noticed, I need that full URL. And you know, those URLs basically show up with usually something that says a CRM.dynamic, something, something like that. And then after that, there'll be some names over there. So I need that URL. But if you've noticed, even when I went ahead and created the table, all it did was it just gives me the name. And even when I go click on it, it really doesn't show me what that full name is. I go into settings, go into more settings. Again, it just gives me that name, even in the description, table type, all of this. I don't get that full URL that I need to make that connection. But there is a way, there's a neat, neat little trick over there. And again, thanks to the whole integration with, uh, with uh, uh, teams, I'm going to build the thing. And I basically all I have to do is build a very simple flow. So let's do that. All right. I'm going to come over here to the flow and I'm going to come and click on a new flow and I'll say, yep, instant. And the instant, what I'll do is actually call this, give it a flow name. Um, I'll definitely do a manual trigger one, but this is the flow now I'm going to use for every instance where I've gone ahead and created an entity and I got to get that URL create a table and get that URL. So I'll just call this as a flow to get table um, info for BI or PBI, Power BI. Cool, it's created that. Now the next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna go ahead and look for the list records. So I just typed in list RE. And here I wanna go ahead and I'll grab the um, new table that I created. 
So I call that table as I believe live demo, and there it goes, live demos. So I captured that. And just to be safe, I mean, you know, I just want to make sure I just get the first um, two entries so that it doesn't, if you've got an uh, a table with a whole bunch of data over there, I don't want it to run through and capture all those rows. I'll just say the first row count over there. So that helps. That way this flow will run a little faster. That's basically all I'm doing. Next, I'm going to add a new step in the, in the con control area. I'm going to do an apply to each. In this apply to each, I'm going to get this value. Value is basically the list of our items over there. So that's the first one value. And then after that, all I'm going to do is drop a compose because I just want to see something. I'm not saving something. I'm not updating anything. I just want to see something. And what I want to see is this one over here. It is the O data ID and watch what that provides me. So I got it, save it. Once I've saved it, I've got this nice friendly flow over here that I'm gonna be using again and again. That's why I kind of named it. I'm gonna keep it available over there. And now I'm gonna do a test. Now I'll say, yeah, I'll perform the trigger, go ahead and save it. It is saving. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do a run flow. Now it runs and usually if everything's go well, it'll just run successfully, all right? And that's what it did, it ran successfully. So trigger was good, went ahead and ran this. Yep, live demo entity you found out. And then it comes to this apply to each. And remember, since I put in the list over here just to get the top one, that's why the count you only sees one. And voila, I got the URL for my Dynamics, uh, for my Power BI connection. It's like, Yay, I got the data over here. Now, Daniel, what all do I need to copy from here? Should I copy the whole thing or should I just copy a little segment of it? I'm gonna just copy a segment of it. So here is all I want. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and put this over here. Now, don't be alarmed if yours looks slightly different. That's okay. When I say slightly different, it always usually changes on this version. Um, when I was doing some testing and demoing over here, sometimes I got a version 9.0, uh, sometimes I got a 9.1. I haven't gotten a 9.2 yet. Point being is, this is all the, the, the URL link that you need right up to the version something something, and it might look a little different for you, but don't be alarmed. However, this is all that you need. Now, I'm gonna keep this aside over here. Let's go fire up my Power BI. So I came to my Power BI desktop as an example to show that I can do it directly from my desktop. I don't have to do it from the Power BI online over here. One thing is try to kind of keep your Power BI to a um, more, you know, at least a recent version. Usually stay at least a month behind, but that's my recommendation. Now I go and close this. Important thing over here is that you, if you don't have yours signed in on the top over here, then you're going to get an authentication prompt. I intentionally kept mine not signed in because you will see that authentication prompt. All right, so now I go to get data. I'm gonna click on more. And one of the first things that you would think of is I just need this from Power Apps. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it from Power Apps. In fact, I click on this Power Platform over here. I'll go to click on this common data service because at the end of the day, that's what it is, common data service. It's not gonna work. I'll even prove it to you. I come over here and click on connect. And on the click on connect, I'm gonna go and grab that URL that I got. Basically, that's what it is. This is a server URL. I can leave everything else, okay. Click on okay. What's gonna happen for me is it's actually, since I haven't signed in over here, um, it will actually go ahead and authenticate, but you would try to authenticate and it says access to the resource is forbidden. It's like, really? Are you sure, Daniel? Is it really a connection to that place or was it because it's a sign on or something weird on your system? It actually is. Well, the, my, my point I'm trying to make is that it really doesn't let you go ahead through that power, that CDS connector in Power BI. It doesn't let you use this URL. And I have another way to prove that to you. If I go ahead and just grab this URL and I'm gonna go ahead and come over here. Now this is my Chrome. And as you can see, I'm running it in private mode. Let's just watch what happens. I'm just click this URL. I'm going to hit enter, sign in prompt comes in, that's very common. So I'll go ahead and type in my credentials, right? Oh, be I, that's a dot. Password comes up, perfect, let me go and type that in. And it is the wrong password. Mine is a multi-factor authentication, so I went ahead and clicked that, went ahead and approved it. And it's going through, I click on, yeah, no. And it's gonna try to access it. And it seems to do this a lot. It'll flick, it tries to go somewhere, comes back again, goes somewhere, comes back again. And after a few times, it'll fail and it'll say that wasn't able to log in. 
basically there that URL is only used for a connection. It doesn't let you do anything else. So if you try to go back and say, Daniel, is there a back door? There is no back door. You got to go ahead and actually just use that URL to make a connection. All right. And see, it comes back and say, we couldn't sign you in. Please try. Well, you and I know that URL is correct, but it's, it's just not a way to go to a CDS. It's not a full Dynamics 365, you know, um, a, a CRM system over there. It's just that link. All right. So don't, don't try that. So I come back over here. I'm going to click on cancel because the one that you want to connect to is come on. So I come over here and I'm going to type in just the dynamics and the one you want is dynamics 365 online. I click on the dynamics 365 online, go ahead and get that full URL, not that one. Well, the whole URL, grab that in, paste it over here, click on okay. And now it'll actually go through. And since I've already got my credentials over here, it actually went through and it came up with the navigator. So that's a good thing. It went ahead and got the entire list over here. And if I go ahead and now search for say live, there you go. It went and got me that full name over there, the CRDD live demo, select that. It will even give me a preview of the data. The preview of the data over here has basically that information that I put in. Let's go see. Yep. FTE, Daniel Christian with Shane Young over there, went ahead and loaded in. And voila, you've got now the data from your Microsoft Teams over there, specifically added over here. And this is how you go ahead and now make your data connection to that table, which was originally created on Microsoft Teams. And then you can do all this magic over there. Now, in closing, all I want to say is that this connection is not a direct query. That is, it's not a live connection, which means that when data is changed over there on your table side, you need to always go ahead and update that data over here in a Power BI. It doesn't automatically do the update, which is why it's not direct query. But other than that, isn't that cool that I showed you how to go ahead and now get that data over there? And then you can go ahead and build as nice, beautiful reports that you want. So as always, keep power wrapping.